we have an awesome guest this segment. He's an actor, a voice actor, a motion capture performer, and he is a martial artist. His name is TJ Storm. Everybody give me a loud round of applause. Everybody at home, give him a round of applause because he has a massive, massive uh, resume. And you got so many things on your resume that I had to get the guys to put an iPad here so I can Perfect. just get everything Perfect. correct. So we've seen you in film. Mm -hmm. We've heard you in video games. Yes. You're in almost a hundred video game projects from yes. what I see. Tons. And you're having a lot of motion capture performances in huge, huge films. So some of the some of your, your performances on camera as you but as another character, uh, you were in Predator. Mm -hmm. And once upon a time in China and America, mm -hmm. you were in the Conan TV series. Yes. Nice. And Martial Law. Yes. And Kickboxer yes. Vengeance. Yes, Kickboxer Vengeance. Uh, nice. That was fun. That it was, was really, fun. really fun. You get, you get to, the, the cool thing about shooting live stuff is that you get to travel to usually very different foreign places and experience their culture as well as get to shoot and work with amazing people. And uh, so everywhere from the Philippines to Romania to Europe, uh, I've gotten to shoot wow. Czechoslovakia, some really, really amazing so places. you have some stamps in your passport. Yes, yes. And that's okay. some of the best stuff, to get to go to those places and experience all of that. It's really I, cool I had I have one lonely stamp, well, actually two. I had one lonely stamp in my passport because I went out of the country at one point and I went through customs and uh, the guy didn't stamp my passport. And I, I went back, I was like, please stamp. Yeah. I, I, you have to show that I was here. And Where he was, was it? I, I went to France. Ah, and, cool. And he was so annoyed that he took the stamp and stamped three pages. <laughs> so I thought I would like Rude. have one stamp after another. <laughs> That's but, awesome uh, though. It was, it was amazing. So I, you, I've been never to... been to France. So I think I'm gonna go next month, I think. And wow. we're gonna go play Dungeons and Dragons. There. Nice. It'll be really cool. That's really a place really cool. to do it, right? I guess. So we'll find out. Great. It'll be interesting. I that's, can't wait. That's exciting. It adventure. seems like you've been to many, many different places shooting um, all the projects that you've been working on. But you also have an extensive library of voice work. Yes. And in video games. Yes. In big franchises. And one of them is Halo Wars. And I have to do oh. full disclosure. My kid is a Halo freak. Ah. So... I'm always hearing uh, combat from upstairs because he has the speakers hiked really high. Awesome. So I probably am hearing you yell at him at some point during the game. So yes. that's pretty cool. Yes, <laughs> uh, we play in in Halo Wars. I'm, uh, we're brutes, so we're these like nine feet tall, yes. super muscular yes. monsters. Yes, he's, he's constantly they're like this, and they're, they're exactly yeah, yes. They're you were upstairs in my house. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now you you've also not only been in in the Halo Wars, you've been in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, mm -hmm. and you've been in Street Fighter Five, yes. and Tomb Raider, and Devil May Cry Four, and Army of Two, and Resident Evil Six. You've been in. Huge yes. franchises. Yeah. What's some of the the memorable characters? Well, one of your memorable memorable characters. Um, you have a lot. I, they're all so different. Uh, I was Strider Hideo in one, so I am talking like this most of the time, and then other times I'm talking like this, and it, it's it's always different. I'm, when you're Birdie and you're doing Cockney, uh, nobody expects the guy speaking Cockney to look like me when they come around the corner. <laughs> So it's it's really fun, but it's really trippy too. And I heard it one time. I heard somebody watching YouTube, and I was like, "That sounds really familiar." And I looked over their shoulder, and I was doing a promo for something for Street Fighter, and it was Birdie, but it's Birdie here, and uh, they did a split screen with me on the microphone, and you're like, "That's me." I'm, I'm like, "That's me." Oh yeah, that's me. That's cool. But it's so weird to hear it and see it at the same time. Right. You know how you hear your voice, and you're like. Is that me? Yeah. When you're doing a completely different dialect or a completely different accent, it's really weird. It is because we have. Well, <laughs> I'm going to point off camera. What the Brit? I, I, we have, we have one of our our uh, members of our crew uh, has a, a very lovely accent, and sometimes when I'm talking to him, I slip into his accent, oh. and then he thinks I'm making fun of him. But I'm like, I can't help it. It's but just you a just thing. do it. It's That's how you learn, though, and right. it's kind of cool. That's how I learned. Uh, several of the, the I, I worked on a movie called The Punisher Warzone mm -hmm. and at the same time we were shooting Avatar at the time so the guy who was running the stage it was motion capture on, on Avatar the guy who was running the stage I think his name was Richie and he what was his accent 
oh, he talked like this, I think. Yeah. And he had an Irish accent. So he was talking and I was like, first, say green clothes. And he's like, <laughs> get away from me. <laughs> and, and he, but I started to learn from him because I played a character named McGinty who was Irish on The Punisher. Nice. And I really have to focus on it because if, as soon as I lose focus, my Irish becomes Jamaican somehow. It gets this weird rhythm and it's just like, <laughs> what? Did you say you're Irish? I'm like, no, man. I mean, no, no. <laughs> so it sounds, it, it, you go all over the place when you get distracted really, really easily unless you practice a lot. And I don't practice enough to just be able to ring right. it up. But it is fun. It's really, really fun being able to switch all of those. And it helps when we're playing, you know, role-playing games as well. I'm usually the dungeon master or the game master. So awesome. to be able to play this for my friends when they're meeting different characters they're and like you can switch voices yeah on you them. switch does they're that, like oh. does that freak them out a little bit yeah and it, it keeps them off balance a little bit right they walk into a shopkeeper's place and the shopkeeper's like what do you want and they're like um <laughs> want to buy a potion yeah what kind of potion do you want and they're like i, uh, I don't know i just forgot what i want man I go outside. I go outside. <laughs> and so you just play, and you in all the bad guys and all the good guys. They all have different voices, and it's fun. Now you have. Do you have a regular group that you play with? I we have three right now. We have three games a week when I'm not shooting, and right. uh, so there are three different groups. Uh, but now, do that now that you they've experienced playing with you, do they expect you to bring the voices? They expect um, it now. Like you're gonna. They know what's coming because I just do it because it's fun. You're doing it with your friends. And fortunately, I have forgiving friends because I got to try new dialect sometimes because I know that I have a character coming up and I haven't learned it. So if I'm trying to do South yeah. African, You're they are suffering out. because I am like, you must hear me when I talk like this. And like, what is that, German? I'm like, like it's not, not German. It's, it's supposed to be African. They're like, I don't think so, bro. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's like, really bad. Uh, that wasn't a good one, right? It was, yeah. So well, at least you get feedback. Yes. You, you get immediate, immediate harsh feedback, feedback, even though they, yes. they may not be kind. Yes, but it's okay. I need that to get on uh, on my game. Right. And it helps. And after a while, you start to get it. Nice. Yeah. Well, you also, we haven't discussed yet your motion capture performances. Those are fun. So those are fun. Yeah. Gosh, I can only imagine. You've been in Avatar. Mm hmm and tell us what you played in Avatar. Um, I play the amp suit that the general uh, crawls into, and then he turns around and he fights the hero. Oh, nice. So when the general's fighting the hero at the end of the movie, that big thing moving around is me doing a lot of that motion. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, it's really fun. And for those of you who don't necessarily know what motion capture is, can I tell them? Yeah. Uh, explain it? Please. Um, okay. So motion capture is basically digital makeup and digital wardrobe. We put on a very, very tight suit with little uh, white markers, and then we go into a room filled with 100 or 200 cameras. Those cameras flood the room with infrared light, and that infrared light bounces off the little white markers and goes back to the special cameras and feeds it into the computer. And in the computer, hundreds of digital artists make us look like whatever they want. So we provide the movement, and then they provide our skin and our bones and together we create a character uh, that looks really, really cool. It's amazing. So if I'm standing there and I bend forward and they throw Godzilla skin on me, it's good to go. If, good to go. if I stand up and widen out my shoulders a little bit, now I'm Colossus. And they can just change it around and they build special models and special rigs. And I learn how to move for each one and work with awesome. the directors and get them, give, hopefully give them what they want. Now, also, as we go through the interview, um, we'll probably shorten that down to mocap. So if we get all excited and geeky and we start talking about mocap, we're mm -hmm. talking about motion capture. Yes, so. motion motion capture, also called mocap, also called performance capture. There's a slight difference between motion capture and performance capture. Motion capture is the technology. Performance capture is what the artists, uh, the performance artists, the actors do inside the In motion the capture. Motion capture. Yeah, perfect. It's mocap. All right. Now. Uh, you mentioned Colossus. So the one of the other films that you appear in is in Deadpool. Yeah. And you are Colossus. Yes. And for me, Deadpool was one of my my films. That was my my nerdy film. I love the scene, the freeway scene, where yes. Deadpool is trying to fight Colossus, and obviously he's just busting up his limbs, and then you just reach down and grab him and drag him off. That's awesome. So tell us more about 
the process. Working through the process and, and just that shoot, like how was it working with um, the actors on that on that film and, and in that process of sure. that character? He's a pretty famous character. No, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think Ryan Reynolds really pushed it through to make it happen. So kudos to him for making uh, Deadpool happen because it's his passion and you can tell. It, his passion make, helped make it come together. And then along with Tim Miller, the director of Deadpool, those two made an awesome team and they banged out an amazing movie. That said, when they shot the scene for, the, the highway scene for uh, Colossus and Deadpool meeting and the big fight, uh, that was, I wanna say that was in Canada. And I was never there. I never was at that. There was a tall actor named Andre and he stood there as the eye line and the original model for Colossus because he's the right size. He wore shoes this thick and he's standing there and he's, he's looking and they're talking to him. Then they shoot the entire scene, has no, no special effects on it yet, then they bring it back to LA, then they look at it and they're like, all right, uh, we need Colossus to have some particular uh, emotions, some particular events to happen. So they go back in to a studio here in Los Angeles, we shot it in Marina Del Rey, and uh, we reshoot the scene. They show me the entire scene, they're like, we're gonna put your performance right here, uh, so the eye lines are already there, so you need to look here because he's talking to you. And he's, he's gonna, tiny. Yep, and yep, you're yep. A tall I'm, character. I'm like seven something, seven feet tall. Nice. And, uh, and then I begin to move and I look at him. And then we, we do all of the stuff. And Sorry, I'm geeking out. And then, <laughs> And then an amazing, uh, another amazing guy uh, at a place called Digital Domain did some of the face stuff and they slapped some of his face emotions on my body movement and they composited it all together. So it's not me all by myself, but I did uh, a huge portion of the acting beats for Colossus. Nice. Yeah, it's really and, fun. And are there some characters where they're actually taking your facial expressions Absolutely. as well? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, tons of games will have this helmet and then we'll have these mandibles that come out with little cameras that face back at your face and it captures everything that you're doing. And we do that for tons of games. Most of the time I have cameras in my face. And you can't, you can't hug somebody because these mandibles come up <laughs> like this. And you, you can't even drink anything because you'll bump into everything right. or pretend to drink anything. So you have to be really, really careful. You can't, can't do that because it covers, it wipes off all the all dots that, on your face and all of that. But yeah, 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 we get to do it all the time and it's, it's really fun. It's really kind of cool. Nice. Now, the, there was another one that I'm going to bring up in your resume because I un uncovered it. You were, uh, your performance work was in um, Captain America Civil War. Yeah. So you were a, a performer for an Avenger. Yes, yes, a couple and which, of Avengers, actually. A couple? Oh, yeah. I heard one. Oh, in, but just in that movie. Tell. But which ones? Uh, for the Avengers, I have some weird stories, but I've been baby group. <laughs> no, we like weird stories. Wait, oh, wait. it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> I've been uh, Baby Groot, Teenage Groot, Rocket Raccoon. I, the one you're talking about is Iron Man yes, in uh, Captain, in, America, in Civil Captain War. America Civil War. And in one single shot, it's a very small shot, very quick, but uh, they were looking at the board. We're doing all the Iron Man stuff. So I was doing all of this and doing all the, the fighting. Uh, and keep in mind, they've already shot. Again, they've already shot most of it. The stuntmen were there. The stuntmen did all the shots. But they want to tweak a lot of the stuff. So they're like, right. we need this, we need that, go ahead and do this, shoot a beam at his his uh, shield and it'll blast up into the air. Nice. So we did a lot of that stuff for whatever reason they wanted it slightly different, so we did it. And they're like, oh, um, we have one more shot. Could you just, you see, the Avengers are talking in a group and one of the Avengers needs to walk up and enter the group. We forgot to get that shot, so we're gonna just digitize it. I'm like. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, um, that's Black Widow. I'm like, <laughs> what? Can you sway your hips a bit? <laughs> Don't watch it closely. Don't watch the scene closely. It's not pretty. I'm not proud of it. But no, it's 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 a really really quick shot. But uh, they got it. They tossed it in. But um, yeah, I, I've been really really lucky to play some really awesome characters, right. especially and, in the Marvel Universe. And the most recent one, and I I geeked out on him a little bit, like two minutes before we, we went on air. <laughs> I was like, I brace yourself, because you were Godzilla in Godzilla King of the Monsters that is out in theaters now. So I just saw that over the weekend. I am on a kaiju high, 
and you confirmed and I said, does he know what he's walking into? Because I am the biggest geek ever for Godzilla. And yes, yeah, so I warned you and this is where we start talking about Godzilla too. And thank you so much for joining us because I know the movie is just out and no, you're awesome. super, super busy. Uh, so I appreciate you coming in and, and answering these questions for us and taking the time. But no, how exciting awesome. is that to, to have a, that kind of caliber of a character and you're, you're like, the guy, you're the feature character it's in this movie. Awesome. I mean, this year I've, I've been exceptionally fortunate. Uh, I have three massive characters. And I thought the year was gonna be cool. We started with the Predator. In the mm -hmm. Predator, I'm the apex predator. I'm the really big one, the 11 foot tall one. The only and one that counts. Yes, uh, but that was awesome. I, under director Shane Black, that's amazing. And then, uh, of course, Godzilla. And then we ended with uh, Darth Vader in Vader Immortal. And I have been... You were Vader. Wow. But that's what I was like. And so in every case... I'm Vader! Like, in every how does case, that... Like, you go, I'm you Vader. Just, you, I'm officially <laughs> Vader. My fr I have a friend. His name is uh, Garrett Warren. He does action. He did the action for Avatar. Mm -hmm. um, he did the action for Godzilla 2014. And he... I, he was... He said, um, have, do you have anybody who does beast stuff? Because I was working on a lot of stuff at the time. I'm like, yeah. And I gave him some names and I forgot about it. Then a couple of weeks later, uh, he calls, he goes, hey, could you come down and work on some beast stuff with us? And he kind of said it like that. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Hey, now, I have a performance capture performance school. Uh, it's called the Mind's Eye Tribe. And uh, we teach people how to move like creatures. So. And where, where do we go and find out more information oh, about um, the Mind's Eye Tribe? MindsEyeTribe.com. There M should be some URLs down here. MindsEyeTribe.com. Nice. Ding. But um, so you have a performance. But we teach people school? how to move like creatures, how to use swords, how to use tactical weapons. We teach them how to perform and be prepared for video games and movies and stuff like that because right. actors don't always know how to perform that kind of action properly. So they have a less chance in an audition and they, they mess up their performances and they have to be doubled by, by stunt people, which is totally fine. But if they want to have a slightly better chance in an audition, for instance, we help right. them with that and stuff like that. So I thought he was calling me down to help the actors that he'd hired for this job, whatever job it was, because I didn't know what it was. Uh, Very mysterious. Yeah, I, he's, I thought we were gonna help them get their movement on point. So I'm like, oh yeah, man, I'll, I'll see you in the morning. So I went down there, and there's only three of us standing on a huge stage here in the valley. And, uh, and you're like, where is everybody? <laughs> and I was like, Where's, what time are the actors showing up? They're like, yeah, whatever. Um, you're Mudo 1, you're Mudo 2, and you're Godzilla. And I was like, <laughs> Yes! It was awesome! <laughs> it was amazing! So, I fought with the Mudos. They kicked me for two days straight, but it was awesome! And we shot it, and uh, it was amazing. And then we went on to Godzilla King of the Monsters, uh, and that was a whole nother event. But it's amazing to, you know, enter the legacy of Godzilla. There's seven or eight guys who who brought Godzilla to life from the right. very beginning till now. Right, right. And I get to be one of them. And I think I'm, I think I'm the first American nice. Godzilla, which is awesome. It's nice. huge, that's not a small thing. So right. I, I totally honor and respect the, the chance to get to be Godzilla. Because the very first movie my dad ever took me to was a movie called Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster. It's the <sighs> very first movie that I ever yeah. remember seeing. Yes, it was awesome. Nice. And it was also terrifying. I was very small. And mm. the smog monster was a terrifying creature. He would fly over the city, and wherever he flew, dead bodies were all twisted up. I was like, <gasps> and then at the end of the movie, Godzilla tears him apart. Serves, and serves I was like, up. yes. And I was just like, whoa, <laughs> this is awesome. And my head almost exploded. It was really, really cool. So to be able to step into that Amazing. also is Amazing. awesome. Now, did you. Did it hit you uh, later on, like when you saw it on, released on film? You're like, I'm Godzilla. I am Godzilla. Like, it was awesome. It was awesome. I, I, I do remember um, we in in the first shoot in Godzilla 2014. Uh, we were trying to figure out how to kill the last Mudo, and 
we were all throwing around ideas. Everybody were, was throwing ideas. And they're like, okay, we'll just shoot a bunch of them and let the studio pick which one it is. Right. We didn't know. So everybody tossed in ideas. And one of the guys, somebody had brought a Barney costume for reference. And I saw <laughs> no. the costume in the morning. I'm like, that costume, I'm not wearing I'm that. Not There's wearing no it. way I'm putting that Barney mask on my head. And it didn't fit anyway. My hair, too, too much hair. So the other guy was wearing it and he was playing with it and he was holding it by the jaw and flicking it around. I'm like, oh, what happens if I open his jaws like this and I blow fire down? I was, gonna, I was gonna ask you that of, and the, with the choreography. Yeah. How collaborative was it? Like it totally. So that, that whole thing, of us. that that signature move but in that 2014. One, just or, that one idea. I, I was like, just could I blow fire? Of, and they're like, sure. We'll shoot that, that is an awesome move. Because it doesn't look like that when we're doing it. Remember, right. I'm sitting there holding a Barney Barney one. Costume. <laughs> it looks like I'm vomiting into a Barney <laughs> mask. So and of course, that's also a good you know, vomit into the bar barn. Yes. I'm sure every parent wants to do that. <laughs> but um, that's what happened. The the Mudo guy, he was on uh, crutches so he could lean forward and move like a spider. Right. And uh, I will never forget that I, I grabbed his head and I pulled the, the Barney jaws apart. Right. And he arched his back to make it look painful. And I pulled the jaws apart. I'm going to show you. And... Wait, he's getting up. <laughs> yeah, and I pulled the jaws apart, and I'm like, and I, I roared down his throat, and the actor fell out of the bottom of the mask before I was done blowing. So I'm like, and he, now I'm just holding a head. I'm like, um, what do I do now? <laughs> so I just drop my arms, and I'm still in character, and uh, I'm swaying Look back at and how forth. Cool. And he, he, I'm, I'm, I have his head in my hand. And I, I didn't know what to do with it, so I was like, I just threw it to the side, and, and Garrett starts yelling at me, you're tired, now, now get, you're exhausted, fall to the side. So I take a half a step, and ooh, I try to fall in slow motion, which is really difficult to do. And you forget about it, because that was one of several endings. But that was and then the amazing... That. The blue fire and it yes. and jets it right down his throat and when kills we, him, and I was we, like, uh, yes! yes! When we went to the theater, I had forgotten that we shot it. Ugh. And so two things surprised me. One, there was this sound that went Yeah, the, the and I saw the this blue up. light and I was like, What's that blue light? <gasps> he's gonna do it! I'm talking about him like he's in third person, like I didn't do it. Like you knew. But I didn't have blue lights coming up my back. I didn't know that was happening. That uh, was all that, the animators doing their magic. I think that for me, when when you have it when it started his tail, I just, I was yelling in the theater and sorry, I apologize to my coworkers. I was like, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Like yeah. it got higher and my well, voice got best. higher. That's what and everybody just, did, including me. He priced the jaws open. And, and I was and there when that happened, but it, it wasn't blue. So it wasn't blue, I, right. I saw it and I was screaming. And but then, they made your move look even cooler. Oh, right? man. It's a it's collaborative effort. It is collaborative. Yeah. And then when we saw the fire blow and his, his, Head came off and Godzilla and throws he... it, and I was like, Yes! <laughs> that was awesome! Because you forget about it. That was right. six or eight months ago, and we shot it and we did several projects since then. Right. And you didn't even forget, oh, I was walking around like Godzilla. And we did the same for this one for Godzilla King of the Monsters. Right. And before yeah. we go any further, because I just admitted I saw it over the weekend, but some people have not seen it. So we're probably gonna talk about spoilers, so sorry, but not sorry. You should have seen it already, and if you haven't, go see it. But we're gonna talk about spoilers, so turn your volume down if you don't wanna hear it. But you had some pretty amazing uh, clashes in King of the Monsters, because you have quite a few monsters in that movie. They, In the script, they say there's like 17 or so of them, but they don't show you all 17, but yeah. they show you, There's they bring the monsters. Yeah. So you had a signature move in 2014. What was your signature move in King of the Monsters? <sighs> That's a good question. What is the signature move? I don't, I'll tell you what my favorite thing was. It wasn't my idea, it was Michael Doherty. Michael Doherty is the director. 
And the reason you got so many monsters doing so many cool things is Michael Doherty. That's his thing. He loves monsters. He loves the genre. Yes, you uh, have to have monsters. You have to have lots of monsters fighting other monsters. Yes. So thank you, Michael Drawing Doherty. Drawing in other monsters so they can Freaking fight awesome. more monsters. Yes. And literally the script is just a vehicle to get to the next yes. fight of monsters. And, and I'm okay with that. That so. is the fun of it. Right. And one of my favorite moments, and I knew it was one of my favorite moments when we were shooting it, is he says, okay, Mothra is over your right shoulder and she's just webbed their heads to the building and there's a bunch of cardboard boxes so uh, they're leaning against the cardboard boxes and I'm like they webbed? so what do you want me to do? <laughs> she you already just, took care of it you're gonna charge them and grab them by the head and slam them and I'm like yes! <laughs> because in 2014 I got my ass kicked hard non-stop I mean, right. the mudos are pounding on me. It's two on one, right. and I just got with their little stabby arms. Oh, you know, I got beaten up. Arms. I got tackled, stomped, flown over, right. flown under, everything. This time, I finally get to tackle somebody, and I'm like, and he said, "Yeah, it's going to be a reflective building, and you're going to see your reflection as you get closer to them, and they they can't get away." And I'm like, "Yes." So I got all super monstery. I'm like, "I'm coming." And they're like, oh, shit. And it was awesome. <laughs> and the guys just have to stand there. And they just it. have to stand there. I'm like, ah! So it was really, really, really fun. Uh, it was a blast. And that was one of my favorite moments. But all the monsters doing all the things. I'm like a kid when I watch it again. I absolutely love being a part of it. And I don't know what's more fun. Doing it, which I get paid for. And that's cool. <laughs> but and that's a cool thing. Also going to watch the stuff. Uh, I love the Marvel movies. I, I love... The MonsterVerse, I love Star Wars stuff. I love, I'm a fan of it. Right. So it makes it like it's not even work. Uh, it, and for a lot of people, it's not. I mean, there's people that mine coal and do stuff right. that is super hard. Right. And that's awesome. But I get to fight monsters and be monsters and right. swing lightsabers now, and stuff. Also, we, we didn't touch upon your, your proficient in many different forms of martial arts. Yeah. And you were... Um, Featured alongside Jet Li. Yes, I got to fight Jet Li in uh, mm -hmm. Once Upon a Time in China and America. How cool is that, being <sighs> a martial artist and being able to... Well, I, I was a, my mom put me in karate when I was very young. And I didn't want to be there because they hit you and you get bruised. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, this, I'm done. She's like, oh, no, you're not. And she right. made me go back in and she would not let me quit. In fact... To make sure that I didn't Go sneak mom. out, to make sure I didn't sneak out, she started right. taking karate with me, and she was—I was a blue belt, and she was down there at the white oh, belts. Oh, she and she was the looking at me, man, and I'm like, serious. <laughs> but because I had to stay, because I had to practice, it was like magic. I got better, right. and a little bit at a time, I started to appreciate what the simple thing of practice does. You just get better. It's like you don't even have to try, except you just got to practice a little bit, and. I got better and then I started staying on my own because I started teaching people and and I just grew now, from that. How, how do you find that that experience has helped you transfer over into performance, you know, the, the performance capture? Do it you, sounds like it's a secret, the secret. the secret, this is the secret. Practice more than everybody else and you'll be better than everybody else. It's that easy. It's really, that's kind of it. Work people hard. think, oh, genetics and uh, magic and... You, just you work, practice, if you work hard, work hard, you have an excellent chance of increasing everything that you do in that, that one area. And that's kind of what I did. Uh, because I didn't really have anything else. I was right. a kid. I, what else did I got to do? I went to the beach, and then because I grew up in Hawaii. I went to the beach, <gasps> and well, then I'd Yeah, practice. the beach in Hawaii. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it was, that was kind of it. And as a result, I got okay at doing martial arts, and I, I, I loved it after a while. And it gave me the discipline and the focus. It allowed me to harmonize mind, body, and spirit. When I was doing the thing, I could very. I learned how to focus on doing one thing because that's kind of the thing of karate, at least. Right. And then I started learning other martial arts. I learned kung fu and taekwondo, ninjutsu, jujitsu. I, I studied uh, capoeira. I did uh, uh, all kinds of martial arts just to understand how they were different. And as a result, I learned different philo philosophies, different cultural uh, cultures and it was body movements yeah. each one has its own form. absolutely and they inform a lot of my movement for a lot of the characters that I do so a lot of the heroes uh, a lot of the warriors 
whether they're good guys or bad guys, uh, they all move from a lot of that, what I've learned from martial arts. And now I've, I've been so fortunate. I've been inducted into the Martial Arts Hall of Fame several times. And uh, I continue to study when I can, and I continue to teach when I can. And we do that at Mind's Eye Tribe as well. Wonderful. And we have given you guys the link to Mind, Mind's Eye Tribe, so make sure you, you check out the more information there. We do have some fan questions for you. Okay. And some interesting ones. Thank you guys for submitting those. Um, if you could have Godzilla battle any creature, who would you choose him to fight? Galactus, next. <laughs> Do you have an all-time favorite character that you haven't played in, in performance capture that you want to play? It's on your list. Galactus, next. <laughs> I'm, I'm sensing a pattern. <laughs> no, I, I would love to be Silver Surfer. My friend Doug Jones got to be Silver Surfer. Yes. And I was like, He's amazing. Oh, dude, you lucky bastard. It's so <laughs> cool. Uh, and and my, my, my other friend, uh, he got to do the stunt version of Silver Surfer. So when he's doing all of the, the hard surfing stuff on the raised platform and all of that, he did all the, the stunt version and Doug did the amazing acting version. Uh, but growing up, that was one of my favorite characters in the books. So I would love that. But I mean, after Godzilla and the Predator right. and Darth Vader. I'm an icon. I played icons. <laughs> I, I, don't, I can't be too picky anymore. I'm just like... Now it's just, uh, ooh, yeah. what, what can I do? But but I love those characters. I love the idea of Galactus. And mm -hmm. I love, uh, I love. I, I don't know what it is about the Silver Surfer. He was just so chill. And you had to push him to the edge. And then finally he would go, okay, time, gloves come off now. Okay, and, time's up. And he would do so much cool stuff. But I don't know. I'm open to whatever. I get to do so many really cool things. I'm really, really happy that I've gotten to do the stuff that I've gotten to do already. So I hope we keep getting to do more. Great. Now, um, this is not my question. They want me to ask TJ about your motion capture suit. And was it itchy and how did you pee? <laughs> Again, that's not mine. That's Thank one... you so much for making me ask him <laughs> those uncomfortable questions. Appreciate it. Uh, you like Barbara Walters. <laughs> this is tough, man. It'll make you cry. It'll make you cry. <laughs> um, the suits are intentionally very, very tight suits. Um, mainly because the technology of motion capture is all based on mathematics. So there can't be any fluctuation in measurements. So the suits are tight. So once they're on, they're locked into position. That way the markers don't move and jiggle around. Right. Uh, they can't be baggy. Otherwise, the markers will be over here. That way the model doesn't look like it's this way all of a sudden when you're performing. Right. Um, so they keep the suits very, very tight uh, on purpose. Uh, so you can't I touch the cameras either. You can't even go near them. Uh, I assume you're not going to be drinking a 22-ounce soda before you get, you're getting in that um, suit, right? That is one of the first things we tell our students at, at uh, our motion Dehydrate. <laughs> No, Dehydrate. actually, it's it's the same thing. Uh, you, once you, you, I tell them go to the bathroom before you get in your suit, mainly because it, there is a zipper. But if you have to take the pants down, now the measurements, all the markers off. are off a little right. bit when you put them back up, and sometimes they have to recalibrate. So, if you want to avoid that, if you're on a tight shooting schedule, go to the bathroom before you get in the suit, and you're good to go. But otherwise, yes, you can go to the bathroom in the suit, but. When you not come back, suit. you're going to be all, yeah, yeah, that could look a We are not weird. going to the bathroom in the suit. We're going to go take the suit somewhere to a private place. Yes. <laughs> Do your business. Yes. Um, thank you for, for you answering, asking that question. Uh, we have one more for you, and this one's pretty cool. Do you have a secret signature move that you did as Iron Man while you were uh, in Civil War? Like, if we go back and, I, I guess they're looking to go back and watch the film and go, that's TJ. Do you, do you remember, like... I did a lot of stuff. Uh, they, I mean, when, when my, my little section of Civil War starts when the elevator opens and Iron Man walks out of the elevator and sees Captain America and Bucky. And I remember, that I'm like, wait, Robert Downey Jr.'s face is, is there... How, it's not Iron Man, it's Robert Downey Jr. They're like, yeah, but he's only wearing a piece of the suit, so mm -hmm. he's a little too fluid. Right. So we need the more rigid walk. And I'm like, how are you going to do that? Like, well, we're just going to take his face and put it on your body. I was like, 
You can do that? Like, oh, it's yeah. magic. <laughs> magic. So he That's thing awesome. comes up, the, the shell goes back, and he goes, hey, Manchurian candidate. And he says something like that, and that starts parts of because it's not all me, but right. they keep doing all that. When they're shooting the shield and it goes against the, with the laser, all of that, uh, I redid that when he falls and he rolls down and he picks somebody up. I picked up a, I think it was a bag of gear. And, and I, I think I'm picking up Captain America or Bucky and I'm going to break his back or throw him or something like wow. that. Wow, okay. All, all these little things. I remember doing them uh, and there was lots of little stuff. My 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 uh, foot rocket gets blasted and I'm like trying to keep That was you! That was you! Little things like that. I remember that. We redid it. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm geeking out. So that was stuff. you! Um, and there's a little cool. part of the fight when you watch them fighting two on one. We redid a little bit of that for some reason. I don't know why. Right. But yeah, little stuff like that. How awesome. That's so How fun. awesome. It's so and cool. It, you know, <laughs> I'm such a geek on, on the Avengers stuff and the Godzilla stuff. Um, I tried to convince the crew here to help me build a cardboard set. A city set. So when you came in, you could just go vroom, 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 and crush it like Godzilla. That is but exactly how I do it. I refrained. I am sorry. I refrained. But I was I was that crazy. It's so, so fun. I, it, I'm glad that I. That is exactly what we did, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Cardboard boxes. I knew it. I knew it. Crunch. I was, and I was right. We should have built it. We should have like yes. had him recreate stuff. So fun. It's but really fun. I, I am so thrilled to be able to get a chat with you and get some behind the scenes fun stories and thank you, thank to get we you know to allow us to get to know you a little bit better so thank you so much for oh thanks for having cutting me us some time i appreciate it i get to be with all of the monsters oh. and all of the heroes look at this <laughs> this place is awesome there's some rounded by the court of the dead thanos's <laughs> thing over here half the marvel universe i know half the dc universe this place is magic this is awesome awesome sideshow is awesome <laughs>